Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to use sed to delete specific lines of text from a text file. So we're looking at a partial Docker composed at YAML file, and I'd like to delete all of these volumes properties as well as each volume in the list. So basically these two lines, these two, you know, these two, these two, and these three at the end here. So in the video, we're going to go over using sed to do this. We're also going to go over using uh, YQ, which is a different tool, to do the same thing that maybe is a little bit more maintainable depending on your use case. So when it comes to working with said, and, and by the way, this Docker Compose YAML file, it's a partial file. You know, you can't just like up this thing and you're ready to go. Uh, I, I extracted this one out of my example Docker Flask application here. I'll leave a link to that one in the description. I just wanted to make something that will fit on one page. You know, the other properties in here aren't important. You know, I, I included a couple for the sake of it here, but yeah, it's, we're focusing on the volumes here. Now, Sed is a really nice tool. Uh, you know, it comes pre-installed on Mac OS and native Linux, and I often use it to find and replace text, but uh, sed can also delete specific lines as well. And there's a couple of different ways that we can delete lines of text. We can target specific line numbers, which would be a little bit easier to read, I think. Uh, let me see if I go to source tutorials. I think I named this one Dell lines. Yeah. So I just want to open up this Docker Compose YAML file here on the side so we can see the actual line numbers that we want to target. Now, uh, the other approach, by the way, is using regular expressions so we can, you know, match a specific line and then delete it. Now, using line numbers could be interesting for certain use cases, but it is a little bit more brittle, right? Like, for example, if we wanted to delete lines like 11 and 12, that's totally fine. But like, you know, what happens if uh, two weeks from now we had a new build argument? Well, you know, now it's lines 12 and 13. So, you know, whatever script or solution you have to do the line deletion with said, you'd have to go and update all of those line offsets. And, you know, we're going to see that it's going to get a little bit weird and hard to maintain here once we start targeting like, you know, 10 different ones to delete there. But uh, the syntax to do this, it's pretty easy. So you just do sed, and then you pick the line that you want to delete here and put a D there, pop in the file name, and that's it. We can see here this volumes line in line 11. It's not included in the output here. And by the way, this file didn't change. So there are a couple of different ways you can run sed. For example, you know, I can run it with dash I here, and it's going to do an in-place edit. By the way, if you're using Mac OS, that will not work out of the box. I think you need to do something like uh, dash I like this with no spaces or maybe spaces here. Uh, one of those, but it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that... It's a little bit different for the GNU version of said that comes with native Linux versus the version that comes with Mac OS. Although you can brew install the GNU version of said, and then it works the same on both. You can always script around that if like dual support for both operating systems was absolutely necessary. So, but I did run this with dash I here and, and we can see it actually overwrote the file. But uh, yeah, we're going to be focusing on not overwriting this file right now. But, you know, in my actual use case, I did want to output a new file where all the volumes were removed. And then I can up my project without volumes, uh, you know, in CI where volumes were being a little bit lame when it comes to running your Docker containers as an root user. And uh, this one CI platform I was using didn't even like named volumes because it wrote it to a specific area of the file system that I didn't like. But anyways, that that was the use case. And, you know, I actually ended up using YQ in the end and we're going to see that at the end here. But yeah, okay, going back to our examples here, what's said, right? You know, there's deleting one line. You know, let's say that we want to delete two lines, right? Lines 11 and 12. Well, we can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, you know, we can just use said's semicolon here to split up different expressions here and we can do this and that's going to delete lines 11 and 12. We can see both lines are gone here, right? The Docker web volume, it's not there. Uh, but set offer is a little bit of a nicer way to deal with that type of thing. So if you have a range of lines that are in a row, you can just do a comma here and then you can have the D here at the end here. And that is going to delete these two lines as well. What's really nice about this one is, you know, let's say that, you know, on the very bottom here, we have lines 30 through 32. Well, I can do 30 to 32 here, right? You know, you can put any range that you want here, you know, as long as it's valid here and it will delete that range there. So it's not just for like, you know, two lines that are adjacent and you can have you know 10 lines that are uh, all in a row here but uh, yeah let's go back to this uh, 11 12 example here cool done right we got rid of this one but now the next one is you know lines 16 and 17 so you know we can just combo off what we just learned before where we can do uh, l or actually line 16 through 17 like this and that is going to work as well we can see you know now we got 16 and 17 is gone that's been removed here and, you know, I'm going to save you some time here, you know, now that you know the patterns and how we're going to do this, you know, I can just run this one liner here and it will go ahead and delete all those lines that we have, right? So, you know, all the lines that we wanted to delete here are, have been deleted, right? There's lines 30 through 32, they're gone here, and I've got that up here. And, you know, this is not the end of the world, right? This is basically a one liner, you know, but uh, yeah, the issue there is, you know, you slightly 
like blow a puff of air on this file and suddenly all the lines are completely messed up and you have to redo everything. And this is not very maintainable. And if you never used said before and someone else looked at the script, it kind of just looks like you have magic numbers there. And I don't know, yeah, it's just a little bit hard to understand. And, you know, maybe if you had some experience with shell scripting and you kind of just like looked at this really quickly, it almost looks like you have like anti color codes over here and you sort of don't even know what's going on there. So, you know, I actually prefer to use the regular expression approach where you can target specific lines matching a regular expression. So for example, let's rewind this back down and uh, you know, let's go with said here and then we'll do lines that start with, uh, I don't know, space, space volumes like this. And then uh, that line just ends. And then we can end that. I don't know, actually we, do, we have to do slash D here and then we can do our dark post YAML here. And we can see lines 11 or line 11 has been targeted, right? Because this line, you know, it starts with two spaces, volumes, colon, and then end of line. So we have, you know, line starts with two spaces, volumes, colon, end of line, and then we delete it like this, right? Um, I forget what these actual forward slashes are called specifically with said, but basically it's a way to delimit, you know, what is a said character versus like some string that you're, you're doing in this case, right? So in our case, uh, we need to do slash D at the end here to delete the line. You know, you can use uh, S slash and you do some substitutions like a find and replace. I have other videos maybe about that, but if not, like, search the history there, there's some examples of that uh, somewhere. But um, yeah, so now we can just use the same trick that we did before with the semicolon here and uh, target the next one, you know, or, you know, targeting this one specifically, and then this, this one, and this one, and this one. And before you know it, you end up uh, with this monstrosity of a command here, which gives us the result that we want. You know, all of our uh, properties here for the volumes and their, those items have been removed here. And then you look at this though, and it's like, yep, that's pretty not maintainable. <laughs> like, you know, we're using semicolon over here and, you know, the next one is line starts with uh, four spaces dash. And then, you know, we have the full Docker, you know, web volume here with any characters. And then we delete that and we go to the next one and we do this and, you know, and so on and so forth. And we get to the, to the bottom here. Now, this is at least uh, a little less brittle than the line numbers because, you know, if I add a new argument here or, you know, maybe I decide to put Redis before Postgres or, you know, something like that, right? Like everything is still going to work, which is kind of nice, but you know, maintainability wise, this is uh, a little bit hard to read, right? Especially, you know, we realistically, we only deleted what, like five things, one, two, three, four, five, six things, whatever, plus the lines there. It's not a lot, like, you know, you start replacing a lot of lines in a file here, uh, like 20 of them, 30 of them, whatever, uh, this is gonna get pretty hard to maintain. You can shrink this a little bit because notice that, and by the way, you know, I should mention that these are pretty long, like for example, with the Postgres one, I decided to include the basically, you know, the entire line over here in the regular expression here. You know, I kind of went for a little bit more complexity up front for potential correctness long term, right? So, for example, maybe we could have got by with just like Postgres colon and maybe like one forward slash or something and maybe matched like up to that. And that probably would be enough to give us what we want. But, you know, if we had some type of false positive there and you deleted the wrong line and this is in some like automation script or something, you know, you don't want to constantly be like breaking the automation script and then, you know, incrementally making it uh, less greedy of a, a regular expression or something like that. So I just went for a little bit more work up front, a little bit more correctness uh, later on. But said does allow you to customize the delimiter character here. Um, in, in this case, it's using forward slash by default. But as you can see, we've got quite a few different paths here that actually have forward slashes in them. So if we look at the output here for like the Postgres one, you know, you need to escape those forward slashes with a backslash. So you end up with like, you know, kind of messy looking, really, you know, gory looking stuff. So you can get behind that or you can get around that by customizing um, the delimiter character here. So, uh, well, hold on. I got to actually put in the file name would be nice. There we go. So we still get the same exact output as we did before. Actually, let me clear that so we're not getting distracted from the other one. Um, but what I did here is, and let me actually even zoom into here because maybe it's a little bit easier to read potentially. Uh, yeah. So what I did here is, you know, we still have the semicolons like we did before. Now, set allows you to customize some of the forward slashes. And by the way, some of them still use forward slashes, the ones that don't actually have forward slashes in them. But yeah, you can do backslash and then whatever custom character that you want, like something that's unique for your string. In this case, you know, a pipe symbol is not going to be used in a path or, you know, the Docker volume syntax or anything like that. So, you know, I just used the pipe there and then we have a whole bunch of spaces here. But we can see, you know, now our slashes don't need to be escaped, which is kind of nice, right? Not too bad, a uh, little bit cleaner, but also not the best in the world, right? If you had this in some script file and you were trying to read this a little bit later, maybe you wanted to pop in here and add another one. Yeah, that's uh, not a fun thing to have to do. So you can actually take this one step further though and what said, and you can 
do multiple expressions like this instead. So instead of using semicolon and putting everything in one line, you can actually break this out into multiple expressions and just use backslashes here to, um, you know, basically concatenate all the stuff into one line or basically, yeah, we have a multi-line solution here. Now we're just explicitly using dash E here for expression. So, you know, there's our first regular expression, second one, third one, fourth one, and so on. And at the bottom here, we have the file. And this is starting to look reasonably reasonable. Um, if I had this in a script file, at least I can understand like, oh, I've got like, you know, 10 different expressions, whatever it happens to be. And, you know, they're all on their own little lines here. So it's a little bit easier to read. We can see, you know, when we're using a custom uh, pipe symbol here instead of using the forward slash. Not bad. And I was actually thinking about rolling with this one. Now, for my specific use case, though, even though that uh, this works and it's like a zero dependency solution, you know, wouldn't it be a lot nicer, I guess, with a YAML file if you can just be like, you know, X app dot volumes and just like delete that. And then it would delete this in there, in there because that's part of this. And, you know, just target these volumes paths here. And uh, that's going to be really nice. You know, you don't need to worry about regular expressions and you don't need to worry about line numbers and, you know, YQ will let you do that. And uh, that's what I ended up using in this use case. But the problem is YQ, it is a Go binary, which is quite nice. There's actually a Python version as well, but the Go version, it will actually reformat your file to be not what it is originally. So what's really nice about the set solution here is, you know, it didn't mess with our spaces and everything. Like it's the exact same file minus a line that we wanted to delete. But check this out. If we run YQ on this Docker Compose YAML file, it's going to be like, you know what? Spaces are cool, but I'm not adding them here. And uh, in this case, there's nothing really super crazy happening in this Docker Compose YAML file. But if you're using something like aliases and anchors, it's going to like turn those into YAML merges and other stuff. Like, let me give you an example real quick here. Maybe I'll just like for right now, I'll just drop this whole entire uh, thing here. We'll copy that whole raw file. By the way, kind of just learned recently that there is a copy raw file icon here on GitHub. You don't need to actually view raw and select all and paste. I don't know how I just learned about that recently, but um, it's there. So yeah, let's say that, uh, you know, we have this whole entire file here. Let me get rid of that. We'll paste in our raw one. I don't know what happened. Did GitHub not copy this thing? Copy, copy. That's all I want to do. Uh, let's see. Paste. Yep. That's how you do copy paste. But uh, yeah, let's run YQ on this thing here. You know, here's what I was talking about. Could, because this uses alias and anchors here with, um, you know, just a dedupe this file a little bit here. So we have these less and less than things here. So YQ converts those into like whatever YAML crazy merge functions. I, I don't know, right? But like it completely destroyed the formatting of this file because well, that's what it does. And the Python version of YQ allows you to pass in some like dash capital Y flag or something, and it will preserve all the formatting that you have, which is like super nice. But I don't know, there's been an open issue on the Go binary one for quite some time now. I don't know if they're ever going to add that feature in because it's apparently, I don't know, some issue with the underlying Go YAML parsing library that does that. So it's like hard to get around, I guess. But in any case, though, you know, I was programmatically just replacing the volumes in this file. And that's all I really cared about. You know, the output of that file, you know, I wasn't committing that back up to version control or doing something with it other than just running a Docker Compose up. So, you know, if it ended up looking like this in the end, that's totally fine for my use case. So, you know, if you have a similar use case, yeah, I don't know, maybe using YQ would be a little bit easier here. So for example, let me bring this back to what we had before so we can actually start parsing this to see what it looks like with YQ. So with YQ, um, all you really have to do here is be like, well, I want to delete something. What do I want to delete? Well, let's delete the property path uh, for volumes here. And then we just pass in the Docker Compose YAML file here. And we can see in this case, the, the path here is X app, right? That's the root of this over here. And we want to delete volumes, which is inside of there. So you can just do X app dot volumes and then delete that. And then you get no volumes here for uh, the X app here. It's been deleted. Notice that this line also went away because, you know, this is uh, a child of this uh, volumes list over here. Nice. So, you know, you do that a couple of times here for all the different properties and you end up with the file that we see here where you just do a comma separated list of now we have X assets over here and then it has its own volumes property. And then you have dot services, Postgres volumes, like, you know, services, Postgres volumes. And this, in my opinion, is uh, pretty nice. You know, this is a one liner, super easy to maintain. As long as you sort of know what YQ does, you, you know, you can kind of almost intuitively understand, you, you know, even if you don't know what it does, right? Like we're deleting and then these paths over here. Like if you ever use JQ, which I've actually done videos recently about, YQ is just very similar, but for YAML instead of JSON. So that is basically the use case I had here. So I ended up just rolling with YQ with the Go version of it, which was like 12 megs in size. It was really good to fit into a base Docker image for something. And uh, that was it. But 
yeah, if you really want to be able to preserve the formatting because maybe you are recommitting these files, then go check out the Python version of YQ. I'll leave links to the description for both of them. You can kind of check them both out if you want. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. You know, set approach, YQ approach really depends. Of course, if you're not using YAML, you may want to reach for said. And I'm sure there probably is a Perl solution that's lurking that may work the same on Mac OS and Linux. If anyone wants to play around with that, where, where we're actually deleting lines here, feel free to post that in the comments. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer this one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.